Many, many years ago, I played guitar in a big band, and the band director said something at one point that stuck with me for years and years, and I didn't do anything about it until pretty recently. And now I'm practicing something from that comment that stemmed from so long ago, uh, something that is really fruitful for my playing, and I want to share with it, share it with you today. The comment that came up, I don't remember how, why this was the context or anything, but he said something like, you know, playing triad scale patterns through the scale, like this is stuff that everybody practices, everybody does, you know, you know, the exercises everybody does, playing triads through the scale. It was something along those lines. And I was sitting there like, I don't practice that. I don't do that. I don't know how to do that. And when I improvise, it sounds like a scale going up and down. And that was the beginning of kind of this prioritization for myself, realizing that scale patterns, breaking up the scale so it's not just linear, is a, a solution to a problem. It's, it's going to help our melodies also be broken up and be more fluid um, with improvisation in particular. And of course, he was talking about the in the context of jazz musicians, improvising musicians saying, yeah, everybody does triads through the scale as an exercise to make sure they can do that. Um, so I actually still never practiced that for the longest time. I kind of dabbled with it here and there, but didn't go deep on making sure I have it down. But I did start to work on some other scale patterns. For example, I got pretty comfortable with just melodic thirds, skipping a note, going down, skipping another note. And that sense has become a really critical part of my improvisation and my playing. If I play... It's all over the place when I improvise just naturally because I really worked on those, the melodic thirds in various ways through the scales. Um, and I've always wanted to go back and work on more and more and more really any scale patterns. I think the more the better for at least my goals and the way I want to sound, the scale patterns breaking up the scale. So I really wanted to get down these triads. And at that time, when I started thinking about wanting to do uh, scale patterns more, I got this book called Patterns for Jazz. Uh, it's a popular book. A lot of people raved about it. At least it was popular at the time, and um, it just came highly recommended. So I got it. But uh, I found it completely useless. For a guitarist, it didn't really help me with anything. It showed exercise like doing this kind of thing, which maybe for other instrumentalists, that's really helpful. But for me, I was like, how in the world am I going to use that in real music? Like, it's... Yeah, okay, a cool technical exercise, but um, I needed to kind of find my own way. So I remembered what the band director said, okay, through the scale, triad scale patterns, you know, through the scale. So clearly the thing to do is take these scale forms that I teach all the time on the channel and that I play and improvise with, and I have a free PDF that has all the scale forms of seven different scale types. There's a link in the description. And the scale positions of you know, learning them in all the keys so we can play anywhere on the neck. So we need to take the scale form and break up the scale form position into patterns. And again, the more the better. And the triads are something that I've always wanted to do. And you hear it in people's playing, tons of people, Pat Martino, Pat Metheny, um, you hear it in uh, anybody, Joe Pass. It's just all over the place uh, with improvising uh, jazz musicians. So... I want to take you on a journey here. We're going to drill this together, and I'm going to show you how I've been practicing it in a very drill-like way, and I'm going to demonstrate the entire thing. And then I'm going to show you how to apply it to music, how I'm working on applying it to music with three different steps to getting to working on it in a real chord progression on a real tune, and I'll share a tune that I'm working on that I'm really in love with right now. So let's dive into the actual exercises. We are going to drill four different versions of the triad scale patterns on each scale form in the key of C. So five different scale positions in C and four ways to do the scale pattern each time. Here's the four ways that we're going to do. We're going to do a triad. So you're doing one, three, five off of each note. So you go to the next note and do from that. So we're doing ascending triad. still doing ascending triad even though you're going to come back down the scale so we're still on ascending triad so we're going don't 
neglect that. That's actually a thing I didn't do for a long time because when I got to the top, I figured I would do it, you know, the, the opposite way, but that's now a descending version. So you do ascending and you go up and down the scale form with ascending triads. Then number two is you do descending triads. So you would go. And you can think of it as just a scale. And of course you have to see and know the scale so well. You have to know it well enough first, but also if you don't know it that well, like really seeing it clearly with a bird's eye view, scale patterns are the thing that is good, that's gonna make you do that. You're gonna be forced to see it, not just in this physical memory linear way. It's really helpful in a million ways. So now you can think of, this is the top note of the scale and I'm doing my descending triad off of it. And you just go down to, now I'm just playing the next note of the scale. So you're gonna learn all of these shapes, all the triad shapes through it, you just have to. Next note of the scale, next note of the scale and try it off of it, etc. Now for the really cool sound, they all sound cool, I think, but really nice and also physically a little easier to do alternating ascending and descending. Okay, so you do this and then you go up to do the next one descending. So you're still doing the triad off G, the triad off A. Really nice pattern. Okay, and then you're still doing ascending, alternating, ascending, descending, even though we're coming down. So you're going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. If that sounds like a headache to work on, well, it is really hard and it's a puzzle and it takes a long time. It takes hours and hours and hours of practice just to be able to do that. So find a way to enjoy that practice and that journey and that puzzle. Now we do the fourth one, which is descending, alternating, descending, ascending. Okay, so here's descending and then ascending. Descending, ascending, still descending. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Whoops, down, up. So you have to think, I went down, I'm here. Now I'm, I'm going down to the next shape. So I go down to the next note of the scale. Simply for knowing the scale better alone, I think this is worth it. Uh, and for me, as far as how I wanna sound improvising, it's uh, also really helpful for that. And I'll show you how it comes into my playing here in a second. So let's go to the next scale form of C. Of course, review it up and down if you need to. This could be called the G form in the cage system because it kind of outlines a G shape, you know, up the fretboard. And this one over here would have been called the A form. So sometimes I'll use those terms, G form, the next scale form up, can be called the E form. The next scale form up can be called the D form. And the final one we're gonna do can be called the C form. So I'll sometimes use those terminologies that come from the cage system. So here we go, ascending. And your goal is to, I, I try to have a milestone I'm working on. So just kind of mapping it out as one thing, what kind of finger can I use, whatever, all really challenging stuff. But then the milestone for me is, can I do it at least once in time? Can I do it at least once while being in time, any tempo, then I move on to the next one. And that's where it adds up to hours and hours and hours. Cause you wait till you get to that milestone before you move on. And then you realize, cool, it's not like it's perfect yet, but you have uh, established the habit of it, a great foundation. So. We're still ascending, even though we're going down, the scale form itself. Okay, now descending. It's confusing because we're going up the scale form, but the patterns are descending. Uh, yeah. Okay, still descending patterns. There's some really challenging spots to figure out fingering wise, which I can share about in the future if you're interested in knowing the exact fingerings I figured out that helped for me. Now we do the alternating ascending descending. Still 
alternating ascending then descending, even though we're going down the form. Now descending, ascending, alternating between those. Descending, ascending, alternating still. warmed into it here which is nice we're done with that scale form we're going up to the e form review it if you need to this is important to me that in these lessons that i don't just tell you to do something i really want to demonstrate through every step of it with you you know you can get the guitar in your hand and kind of practice along or pause it and work on it it's just important to me to show what i'm advising and every nook and cranny of it so ascending only physically awkward whoops okay and I would make sure I can do all those in time at some tempo any tempo before moving on if I'm really drilling it or decide some other milestone for your for yourself right those milestones can increase over time all descending each time descending triads whoops Descending on the way down the form. Okay, ascending, descending, alternating between those. Ascending, descending still, but the way back down the form. Alternating, descending, ascending. You might think, what's the difference between alternating one way or the other? It's it's the same thing, you're just alternating. But it is different because we're in a scale form, then we're alternating on different spots within the note selection there. So it's actually important to do both. Oops. how it gets you know as I get warmed into it little moments where I'm like oh that that feels actually smooth for a second okay this one's really uh I have it less down personally it's it's a difficult form to see in this bird's eye view way uh what we could call d form I personally wouldn't think of this as dorian unless you're treating it as dorian but a lot of people will call it that because d the second note of the scale is the lowest note of that scale form but I don't I don't subscribe to the physical scale form being Dorian because it matters how you're using it, right? We're gonna be we're gonna be treating it as C major. Okay, ascending triads up through this scale form. A lot of shifting. Back down, still ascending triads. Oops. Tricky one. Ascending, descending, alternating. Still ascending, descending, alternating. Ah. Messed it up there, but of course I would continue to practice it. When it's going right, it's really kind of a little brain massage. It's so logical, it's so it just feels so nice to me anyway. So I hope you enjoy practicing it as well. Now we're doing a, a descending, ascending, alternating through this form. That's all four here. One more scale form to go, then we're gonna play some music. C form, if we wanna call it that. The root of C is here. Ascending triads. Okay. Oops, starting over. 
very tricky. I need more practice with that one. Descending. Descending back down the form. It's very good for our ears too, just hearing aesthetically that the whole scale kind of breaking up. Alternating, ascending, descending. Descending, ascending. There we go. Okay, that's all of them. <laughs> so, uh, doing that first and drilling and having a milestone for yourself, can you play it in time at any tempo, up and down with each of those before moving on to the next one. So this first one... You know, you'll spend a lot of time just mapping this out. Can I even play it in order out of time and slowly work up to? Doesn't matter how fast. Whoops, see, I messed up. You could treat it as triplets or quarter notes or eighth notes. It doesn't matter just as long as it's in the right order. Etc. And then up and down in time and then say, cool, I'm going to move on to the next one. And let that be like tons of practice sessions. But if you want this in your playing, then of course that is very worth it. So now let's talk about applying it to a tune, a progression, whatever you want. There's a song I've been working on that uh, recently that I'm just in love with that is called I'm in the mood for love. And there's a version by Julie London that um, Barney Kessel plays on that I just absolutely love. So I'm going to um, make a loop of the A section of that and then talk about applying it. And we're gonna apply this stuff in three different ways. We're gonna work on playing just the patterns in real music over like the patterns only, but trying to make them sound musical. I'll demonstrate all these. Okay, just the patterns, but breaking up the rhythm to make it sound musical, very challenging. Then we're gonna do an exercise where we play constant notes, constant eighth notes, quarter notes, whatever. And you can play any notes, but then you try to add little, little bits of implementing somewhere here and there, the patterns that we've just worked through. And then the third one is to really try to you know, play something you like, play real music, play phrasing, and of course, incorporate where you can and where you like it, the new patterns that we have just worked through. So here is the progression for I'm in the mood for love. It's C major, A minor, so one, six, two, five, and then one, and then two, five again, and then one, and then F7, then E minor seven, D sharp diminished seven, D minor seven, G seven, D minor seven, two, G seven, five, one, and then five, and, it, and that's the A section, it goes back around. Um, when we're working with the scale patterns, we don't need to worry about these little chords that go out of the key. We can just play and see. We could add some chromatic notes if we want or not, but the scale patterns will kind of override the need to like perfectly hit the chord changes because they are so, uh, they have so much momentum on their own melodically and it, and it really works and it kind of adds its own tension to kind of ignore the changes so long as roughly the rest of the changes are in a key. So here's how the tune goes. I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me Funny but when you're near me I'm in the mood for love. Okay. Excuse my singing. I like to try to at least. Okay, now we can go into playing exercise I want you to do is literally this, but break up the rhythm just to see if you can try to have moments of it feeling good and not dumb and not like a dumb exercise. You can repeat, 
notes too, like. I'm doing the triads. Okay, might switch over here and try the descending one. Of course there's moments of like, it just sounds like an exercise, you know, but we're trying to have little bits of expression with it. A huge advantage in our, in having quality practice is the willingness to work on stuff that doesn't yet feel like the music we want to play. Be willing for it to not sound good yet while you're kind of working on a certain ability. Then you let loose later and try to play music. So how about we try this alternating one? kind of got off of it a little bit, but you see the point. Try to do the actual thing and break up the rhythm for it. Let's go on to exercise number two, play constant notes. Whatever tempo you need to, if you can play. I might do it this tempo for myself. This exercise alone is a great idea. But do it slower if you need to, just constant quarter notes, constant half notes if you need to, constant eighth notes, and then try to incorporate and play anything, really anything, but if you just want to be in the scale, that's fine. Then, whoops, don't want to pause. Incorporating it in little ways. The point is constant notes and then here and there try to add it in. Ah. It's hard. Okay, I'll try again. That's exercise number two. Then finally, you just play real music, which means try to just do something expressive. Don't worry about the changes in this. Don't think about the changes. And then in your playing, try to use little bits of the new patterns willing for it to not sound good. It'll sound forced a lot of times. on and on I don't have control over it in the way that I want to um, but it's already helping a lot I'm liking a portion of 
the amount of times that I'm incorporating it. I'm like, oh, yes, there's a texture that breaks up stuff I'm used to. There's this cycle that happens in improvisation practice where we'll find something fresh and new and then use it a ton and feel great about it. And then it gets stale and we just don't like our playing. We think it all sounds stale. And then we have to break through the plateau by doing something like this again, like drilling something that we can't do yet from the ground up, starting to get it into the playing. And then it feels fresh again. And then the cycle starts over all the way again. So long kind of different type of tutorial really walking you through every little step there for the right person if that's you then hopefully you found that really valuable and something you want to work on and uh thanks for watching and it was enjoyable for me to share it with you so if you don't know your scales in and out and you just need a visual kind of layout of all the scale diagrams then definitely download my printable parent scales PDF. It is seven different scales and it shows all of the scale positions just like we walked through here and it shows exactly the ones we played here. The C major, they're all written in C but then you can move them around to any key. So grab that, there's a link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. I post a new lesson video every week and I'll be back with another one very soon. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.